I'm not a writer. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning back in to your favorite channel. Pelican Bay K9 is giving it to you the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it. Some folk ain't, man. Like I tell y'all brothers, remember that in life, no matter what you do, some brothers gonna like it, <laughs> some sisters ain't. Some sisters gonna like it, some brothers ain't. Y'all hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, man. Totally free. I mean, the hardest things to give away is the free shit. Go ahead and hit that. If I was trying to say something, you'd be, hit that free button, man. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that like button before you get up out of here. And big shout out and salute to all them brothers and sisters down in the chat. Big salute to the brothers and sisters that came to the chat before the video start. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to y'all. Big shout out to all the dog lovers across the world. All my folk in North, South America, Africa, and all of Europe, all of Asia, and all the little islands that's rocking with the bay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> salute to y'all, man. Salute to my folk in Croatia. Salute to all my bulldoggers out there. It's your boy, PBK9. Today, I got <laughs> this shit PBK9 style. You know, I got y'all some news. I got y'all some talk. We going to do something a little bit different as well today. You know, we got to bring them creative juices out. You know, see, because see, I'm going to show you where brothers copy the big content. But it is what it is, man. You know, it is what it is. I'm done with the jokes. I'm done with all the, uh, you know, with that community, trying to trying that community shit. I'm done with that. You know what I'm saying? We about to get into do, to this first video. Because I started that versus thing, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to this pit bull talk. You know, I see some brothers, you know, out here biting content. I'm going to call it biting, you know what I'm saying, because I look at it like I'm a, I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? I'm a creator, you know. So when I, when I make content, and if it ain't something that's about me and it's just my style, then it's biting, you know. So let's get into this versus, man. The first verse battle we got, you know what I'm saying, we got... um. Snake Man's Pedro versus Grand Champion Shep. Let's take this thing back to a couple years. You know what I'm saying? These brothers wasn't in jail. These brothers been out here. When I've been bulldogging on social media. Social media dogging. You know what I'm saying? Social media dogging. When I was bulldogging, I don't know where you was at. You're making up excuses with brothers popping up. And now I'm social media dogging. And I'm bringing up the old files. Let's get back into it, man. Snake Man versus Grand Champion Shep. The, the, this ain't the first versus battle. This is one of the versus battle. We got three battles to show y'all brothers today and how I, how I was doing it back then. Let's get into it. All right, the first dog up is a three-way crossbreeder from Smith and Walton's champion, Bad Billy. A three-way crossbreeder of a champion, Bad Billy. And this dog I'm talking about today is school teacher and Sonny's Grand Championship. Grand Championship dominated multiple divisions. Started at 37 pounds, he worked his way up to 41. Went in his first at 37 in 16 minutes. The second at 39 in 26 minutes. Under the school teacher, Grand Championship won his third in 41 pounds in 55 minutes and his fourth in 54 minutes. 
it was sold to Sonny after his fourth hunt. Now when Sonny got the dog, it was hard for him to find hunts because of Shep's reputation. He was paid the forfeit for three different occasions. And when he finally got the fifth hunt, he, after that he retired. So after winning his fifth hunt, Grand Championship was retired. And I, I, I know he produced some good, great dogs, but I'm not real familiar with the dogs coming down off his line. So, you know, you can go back and if you want to go check Grand Championship or online pens and see what his offspring is, you can go back and do that. Now, the next dog went by the name of Wee Willie and Little Joe, owned by Mr. Crenshaw. Mr. Crenshaw felt like he was dead game, but then he really didn't like the mouth that he had. So he sold him to a guy named Eminem. To make a long story short, he was sold for $600 to a man named Mr. Snake Man, who named him Pedro. Snake Man's Pedro. Snake Man's Pedro won his first in 37 minutes at 35 pounds. His second, he won against the famous Cupid dog that lasted over 2 hours and 47 minutes and Cupid scratched, died while scratching. Now the third was only two months later and that went for 47 minutes. The fourth went for 52 minutes. Now the fifth, those guys bought an eight-time winner named Sarge out just for Pedro. But in an hour and uh, what, 47 minutes, it was all over. After gathering this reputation for Grand Champion Pedro, it was hard for Snake Man to find hunts for him. So he collected several forfeits. You know, people, you know, just couldn't come to the table when it came to Pedro. And Pedro was sold. He was sold to several people, including Tom Garner, which he was sold again and ended up in Canada, where he died at. Now, both of these dogs are great and phenomenal dogs. But when it comes to the versus battle, you know, Snake Man's Grand Champion Pedro is going to have to win this one because for one you know he was a nine time winner both of those dogs were in the same weight class so that would have been perfect you know what i'm saying both of those were in the same weight class they could have hunted each other snake man i believe mean, would have out hunted grand championship although they say grand championship had teeth like When it came to cutting hogs and stuff like that. But I believe Grand Champion Pedro will out hunt Grand Championship. And Grand Champion Pedro has produced more and better dogs than Grand Championship over the years. So Grand Champion Pedro would have to win this versus competition battle. That goes to show you one man trash can be another man's treasure. Because Mr. Crenshaw felt like the dog was dead game, but he didn't have enough mouth. They're still on his yard, so he passed the dog along. All right, the dog ended up being a nine times winner. Nine times winner. So that's another thing that, that tells you, sometimes you gotta give dogs time. Give them time, don't rush them. Cause what you may see right now today is not what you're gonna see tomorrow. Like the boys say, yesterday's price is not today's price. You know what I'm saying? So what you see today in this young dog, it's not going to be the same thing that you see next six months to a year in the old dog. Big salute to them brothers and sisters. Like I say down in the chat, y'all go ahead and hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? It's your boy, PBK9s. Andy Cap versus Reno is our next versus battle. You know, because I did them all back then. Jeep versus Jocko. Jocko versus this dog. Honey Bunch versus this dog. You know, I'm just giving you some of that old content. It's good to, to see some of that old stuff sometime. You know what I'm saying? Some of that old stuff sometime. So, Andy Cap versus Reno. Let's get into it. First off the bat, we got to go to the 80s. Early 80s. We're going to a dog named Balls Dirty Mary. Balls Dirty Mary had her first little. She only had six puppies. You know, some good dogs in that little. But in 1984, Dirty Mary bred to Holland's Cherokee Chief. And she had 12 puppies that little. 12 puppies. Now that little 12 came. Bold Action Rum, Mr. Rogers, Crankshaft, Love Nut, and the dog on tonight's spotlight. Champion Reno. Alright, the reason Reno drew my attention is because I heard he had two seizures on his first two hunts and he won. Still, after having the seizures. 
You know, first one he beat a dog named Flint. The second one out hunting a dog named Chocolate Soldier. And an hour and some change, and he had a seizure, and it took him 15 minutes to recover after he had a seizure. You know, but um, from what I hear, he only had the seizures when he was taken down too low in weight. You know, but the dog was a for sure finisher. Because of this, a lot of people thought Reno was a curve, but he produced multiple champions. That's why he's on the rum list today. After his last famous match with Mr. Jones, Reno was sold. And it was said that Mr. Jones did everything he could to distract Reno during his hog hunt. From slapping the ground to making noise, he did all anything he could to distract Reno from grabbing a hold to the hog. But he got what he was looking for. He got what he was looking for because when he slapped the ground on this one particular time, Reno released his grip on the hog and grabbed Mr. Jones by the, by the wrist, breaking his brand new watch. You know what I'm saying? He got mad, he got mad, and act like he was gonna pull out a knife, but you know how it go when, you know, acting like and doing is two different things. So, you know. Uh, in 1971, Mr. Maurice Carver had one of the famous littles, Indian Bolio Little, which he was siblings with uh, Carver's handicap. All right. But that's not the handicap that I'm talking about right now. See, that handicap is Carver's handicap, and he was considered one of the most gamest dogs ever, to this day scratching 36 times to his death. That dog scratched 36 times to his death. But two decades later, Mr. Hall came up with his version of handicap, which was Hall's handicap. And it was bred down from the same family of dogs, but Hall's handicap was a whole different dog. Had a whole lot more mouth, was a lot gamer, a lot smarter, a lot ten more tenacious. He bought everything when he came, you know what I'm saying? Hell, brimstone, and fire. See, Carver's handicap was a great dog, but Hall's handicap was a phenomenal dog. He was a phenomenal dog, killing four out of five hogs that he went hog hunting with. Four out of five died on the scene. My opinion, Hall's handicap was the better dog of the two, between him and Champion Reno, I felt like he produced better dogs than Reno. He was the better show dog than Reno. And being that Reno was having the seizures, you know, if they was to ever compete against each other, you know how that would have ended out, you know, because he couldn't have no seizure on Andy Cap. While Andy Cap was out hunting with him, it would have been DOA. So, you know, Andy Cap pretty much wins that. Now, when it comes to Grand Champion Spike versus Grand Champion Yellow. Been da, done that. Break it down. PBK9s. Let's get into it. Is yellow gotta be at the top of the rum list because simple facts like yellow, yellow blood has been preserved better than Jeep blood over the years. Everybody got Jeep dogs, of course. You know what I'm saying? But more people, there's more yards that focus on keeping the pure yellow than it was yours than keeping the pure Jeep stuff. You know, you can. it's easier for you to go find a, a, a pure yellow dog right now than it is for you to find a pure Jeep dog, is what I'm saying. And the pure yellow dog gonna have more traits like yellow compared to the Jeep stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, if, it's a hit and miss when it comes to the puppies when you're getting them Jeep dogs these days. You know what I'm saying? It's a hit and miss. You might get a little, a, a, a good home hunt puppies, you might not. You might get a few, but that's any little, any bloodline, but I'm just talking, you know, for one, my opinion, and two, like, just of what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And anybody, now, everybody know I love my Jeep blood, but anybody who deal with the Jeep right now today, from back in the days, and deal with the yellow from back in the days to right now today, y'all both know, and you know I'm not lying, that if you get anybody Get one of them yellow dogs today. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna have, uh, you probably have better litters. You know what I'm saying? Litters with more, the ratio, you're gonna have a higher ratio of hunting dogs. You know? Higher ratio with the yellow dogs than with the Jeep dogs. Cause, like I said, more people stuck to breeding the pure yellow than they stuck to breeding the pure Jeep. And the ones that stuck to breeding the pure yellow from all across the country, like, they was breeding better dogs than the ones who was breeding the Jeep dogs. That was pure Jeep stuff. They were breeding different dogs off a of Jeep, but it wasn't 
dogs that can compete with the dogs off of yellow. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I feel like yellow should be at the top of the run list and definitely over Frisco. There's no way in 2021 Frisco dogs have thrown more champions than yellow dogs. Grand champion yellow is at the top of the run list because right now today ain't no dogs throwing consistency like a pure yellow dog. And unless you a young dog, man, then you know I ain't talking about the yellow color. I'm talking about the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? So when I say yellow dog, if anybody looking at this video and you think I'm talking about a, a light color cream dog, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a yellow bloodline dog, which majority of the dogs come out that color sometimes, but I'm not talking about that color. I'm talking about the blood. All right, Grand Champion Spike, the direct son of Wood Snooty. Taking his first hunt in 40, his second hunt against a half-brother of G. So, you know, some people say that's impressive, but then dog men be like, that's not G. You know, he's a half-brother, but he's not G. Like, he didn't make no name for himself. G did. All right. Third, he, he out-hunted a dog named Spence that went the... the, the the hunt before Spence went out before he went to Grand Champion Spike and he went out for two hours. He went out with Spike, it, it, it lasted about 20 some minutes. Then they took Spence back out again. Spence hunted for two more hours with the next dog when they went out in the woods. So that showed you something about Spike's mouth. You know, his mouth was tenacious. And he was he was said to be a rough, pretty rough dog. And I'm sure most people would agree that he is the best dog coming off of Wood Snooty. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we talking about a six time winner. Always staying out in front of his opponent. Seeing how much energy they got, seeing what they working with, how they moving, how they chasing them hoes. Always staying out in front of his opponent, just putting out enough energy, you know, to finish it on off. And always get the job done, six times. So Grand Champion Yellow got him on the hog hunting. Grand Champion Yellow got him on the breeding. Now here is what I want to ask y'all what y'all think, right? Grand Champion Yellow, if this breeders could go down, which one you think will produce the better dogs? Grand Champion Yellow bred to Honey Bunch or Grand Champion Spike bred to Molly B? Who do you think, who would you start your yard off of? Grand Champion Yellow to Honey Bunch, Grand Champion Spike to Molly B? And although I never had a dog off of Spike myself, I'm not gonna lie to you, I never had a dog off of Spike, you know, when he was off of Snooty. But my partner had, uh, it might have been a grandson of Snooty or a great grandson of Snooty back in the days. It, it might have been a grandson, you know. And he gonna tell, he gonna tell shit me from what I'm about to say. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think, I can't remember, you know what I'm saying? But I think, I think I watched Snooty. I want to say I did, but I can't verify it, you know what I'm saying? I can't say for sure or whatever, but, you know. But, I mean, it's good as far as saying that's old school blood, you know what I'm saying? As far as having something directly off of Snooty, and you want to get a dog on Spike, and, you know, that's you have a Snooty grandson or whatever. So, I mean, that would be great to have a grandson of Snooty, you know, some old on the yard. But, imagine... If it was some Grand Champion Yellow Sperm floating, a Grand Champion Yellow Sperm saved, and it was for sale, you know what I'm saying? How much would that be worth? <laughs> if, if you could bring any of the dogs back from the um, the 90s, we ain't gonna go way back. Any of the dogs back from the 90s to do an AI breed, you know what I'm saying? If you had sperm froze in the vet or whatever, which dog would it be out of all the old school dogs? You can only have one male and one female. You know what I'm saying? My female would be Honey Bunch. And my male probably would be... Uh... I probably would go... I probably would go, uh... G. G to Honey Bunch. But then I, I kind of... Maybe, you know, I kind of want to steer to the yellow and Honey Bunch and try that. Because, you know, G with Honey Bunch going to be kind of as that close stuff but the yellow and the honey bunch it'd be something that nobody ever did before you know but uh i believe i'd try the yellow and honey bunch 
and see how that turned out. But yeah, man, that was just some of the versus battles that I did way back when. You know what I'm saying? Instead of brothers shooting your, shooting your shout outs, you know, they uh, steal your shit and try to knock you. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, one thing about bulldogging, you got some brothers that bulldog to fit in. <laughs> they got a bulldog to look cool. They got a bulldog because it seemed like the thing their homeboy was doing. And then you got other folk that bulldog because that's all they know. That's their life. Bulldogging is their life. Nah. And when I say that, I don't mean, I mean outside of your family, your kids and all that. You know what I'm saying? Outside of all that. That's all they knew. When they was a kid, they was bulldogging. You know, you got different folk out here, man. Everybody want to ride the same bus, though. You know, even in school, they don't like let everybody ride the same bus. <laughs> you know, they have, you, matter of fact, everybody don't even go to the same school. You know, you keep your, your certain ages with your certain ages. Because these ones right here don't think like these ones up here. <laughs> these 12th graders got a whole different mind frame than these 7th graders. You know? Y'all want 6th and 7th graders and 5th graders to sit on the same bus and to think they can hold conversation with each other. And when the 7th graders respond in a crazy ass way, you know, you wonder why you get a response from the 12th grader the way you get. <laughs> the mind thinking ain't the same, dog. This is all it is to it, man. The mind frame thinking ain't the same. You know, now let's talk about e-collar training real quick for my brothers and sisters who want to do uh, dog training or anything like that. This is a rather cheap collar, but the, the purpose of me telling you about this is this one thing. Before you ever go out there and put this on your dog, the first thing you need to do is test the volumes on it. You know what I'm saying? Put it on the, you, most most collars and don't buy an e-collar that don't got three modes until you get more advanced to where you know what you're doing. If you just If you're just starting out, get an e-collar with three modes vibration beeping mode and your electric shock mode you know you need your three modes and i'm gonna show you why all right first thing you want to do before you put it on the dog is to start it with one and and to see how your your shock feel you want to shock yourself before you shock your dog so you can see how how strong it is you know you start with one like right now i'm feeling a little tingle in my hand i'm on one i go to two I feel a little tingle, you know, three, a little bit stronger. It's about like my finger falling asleep, you know, that kind of feeling at the tip. Four is a little bit stronger. The whole purpose is when you put this on your dog, you just want to let him, let him run on a 50 foot lead, right? Once he get to that 50 foot lead to the end, then all I want to do is zap him one time to see if he can feel that four. I know this four is not strong, so I know it's not hurting him. Can he feel the four? All I need for him to do is to look around like he he felt something. You know, that's all I need for him to do. Now, while he out there on that 50-foot lead is when you can train him to come. You know, you can practice your, um, your, uh, your you know, your, your when you, what's the name of the thing, man? When the dog come back to you. <laughs> I'm blank right now. But you can practice making the dog come back to you. You know what I'm saying? Your recall. <laughs> I went blank. You can practice your recall. You tell the dog to come. If the dog don't immediately come back, you give him a beep, and then you immediately give him a shock and a tug, a slight tug, which letting them know to come on back. Now, you hold the shock button until the dog starts coming back, making motion, coming back towards you. As soon as he takes steps coming back towards you, you release that shock button, you know, Cause you want him to know that he's doing the right thing. If he acts like if he's he or she's acting like they're not paying you any attention, then you hit that beat button followed by the shock button, and you hold it until he starts coming back towards you. And like I said, get that leash a little tug, and you got to do this on a long leash. You can't do this on a little five foot leash. You got to have a fifty foot leash or twenty some foot leash at least, so the dog can be away from you. You know, and you just give him that little tug, and he knows. He don't feel shock whenever he comes towards you. Any When you call him, anything he do outside of coming to you, he going to feel a shock. And that's the whole thing. And this is the thing. You get that beep, get him used to hearing that beep and that shock after. You want to train his mind. 
That's the whole thing, training a dog mind. You don't want to make that dog afraid of you. You want to train that dog. So when that dog thinking, every time he hear that noise, every single time, it's going to be a shock behind it. So by the, t by the time it's, you got to take the shock volume up because the dog, you know, is getting used to that small vibration. He's already used to being shocked after this sound. So you have you won't really have to do nothing but just make this sound, you know. He going to think the shock coming and he going to straighten up. So if he's out there acting up and you hit that beeping noise, he's thinking that vibration, that shock is coming after. Not the vibration, but the shock. He's thinking the shock is coming after. So he, as soon as he hear that beep noise, he automatically corrects himself and come back towards you if that's what you got him trained or that's what you're training him for, you know. But it's just starting at a low level, man, and just testing it yourself to see what the electric power is that's coming from your collar. You know what I'm saying? And take it one step at a time and re remember, um, uh, uh, keep doing it over and over. You know what I'm saying? Repetition, 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 repetition. That's what it's about, man. No dog starts off Einstein, but you can turn them all to it. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep this thing rolling. Okay, my brothers. Like I said, hit that like button up before you get up out of here. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell up as well. And like I said, man, if you're having flea problems or before you have flea problems, Soresto Dog and Flea Collar works for eight months. It worked for me. You just got to make sure the fleas down in the yard. Make sure the dog good and clean. Put that collar on them and you're good to go for eight months. You know, in the wintertime, going to come for them eight months over. You know what I'm saying? Your flea season will be gone by then. You know, so Soresto Dog and Flea Collar. Um, I'm thinking about, uh, I'm not sure, man, but I, I may be doing an international online dog show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no knock to nobody else. Uh, one thing I will say, the days that I do it won't conflict with none of the other brothers that's doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? And the days that I do it will, won't conflict with it. I will make sure that if you decided you wanted to compete in one and the other, that you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, PBK9s don't hate, man. I'm just trying to do the best I can, the positive way for this breed. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like I said, we, uh, we'll get this thing. I'll give y'all brothers a date on it. I'll let you know what's what with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just just checking some things out. Uh, like I said, the PBK9s International Online Dog Show, and I will you will be judged fairly. I won't even judge it. You. you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be involved with the judging. You know what I'm saying? Not going to be involved with it. But I will be involved with bringing some brothers and sisters with some great looking dogs into the program. You know what I'm saying? And like I said before, uh, none of the days will conflict with any of the other brothers who doing them type of shows out there. You know what I'm saying? PBK9's International Online Dog Show coming to you soon. So y'all stay tuned for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one reason I, I noticed, man, uh, you know, so many people get jammed up and it's a reason so many people get jammed up in this american pit bull terrier game you know because it's a hush hush system you know a hush hush system but see it ain't hush hush on what you're supposed to be hush hush about the crimes you out there committing it ain't hush hush on that it's hush hush on this youtube the, the, the wannabe game in the facebook the wannabe game is hush hush you know what i'm saying but it, the stuff that y'all should be being quiet about you talk about, you put on social media, you know what I'm saying, you brag about, you know. That's why so many people jammed up in this dog game. Y'all want the truth to be quiet, you know. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's how it is in a lot of things, you know, what brothers and sisters do across this world and throughout these countries. They want the truth to be silent, you know what I'm saying. Want the truth to be silent. <laughs> Y'all want half of the truth, but you don't want other half. Y'all want the truth that say, oh, a lot of them brothers back then may have been racist or they may have tried to keep me out the game and this and that and this and that. Y'all want that part of the truth and he, you, you accept that, but you can't accept the other half of the truth, you know. You can't accept that half. PBK9s, man, is what distinguishes me from the rest, you know what I'm saying, is what distinguishes, distinguishes me from the rest, you know what I'm saying? Got, like I said, I got some news for you today and a little bit of dog talk. And we're going to get into uh, this thing about who do y'all brothers and sisters down in the chat think the Michael Jordan of this dog game is. And we're going to do a, a series. We're going to do a series 
uh, multiple episodes on this. You know what I'm saying? This is just the first episode. Who do y'all think is the Michael Jordan of the dog game? And I'm not talking about person. I'm talking about dog. You know what I'm saying? Not talking about person. I'm talking about dog. All the dogs you ever heard of, who do you think the Michael Jordan of the dog game is? Each dog, we will give their own little bit of time to, to, to discuss some things and, and, and see what brothers and sisters got to say in the chat. You know, the first dog we're going to speak on is Kobe's pitcher. Do y'all brothers and sisters think Kobe pitcher should be the Michael Jordan of the dog game? Do you think he's qualified to be the Michael Jordan of the dog game? You know what I'm saying? When we look deeper into Kobe's pitcher, you know what I'm saying? Um, look at the old days, you know, no social media. No magazines, you know what I'm saying? No cell phones. And some people barely even had regular phones, house phones, you know. Kobe's pictures, Kobe's picture battled all that for us to still have more stories. We got more stories on Kobe's picture than we do on some of these dog brothers that be up here talking all these funny, funny stuff day to day. You know what I'm saying? How the hell we got more dog talk on Kobe's picture? From 1920-something, then we got on some of y'all brothers that got such big mouths. You know, Kobe's picture. Should it, should we look at the breeding? Was was his breeding, that, that, that the breedings that was made with him significant enough to say he should be considered the Michael Jordan? You know what I'm saying? I looked at several of uh, his offspring. I looked at his offspring. He had great dogs. He was bred to great dogs, you know. And when you look at his, his match record, you know, they say he had 20-some wins. And I'm willing to bet you from the time Kobe's picture really existed to right about now when we really reading these stories and the 70s whenever the books came out or whenever they came out, the story is not accurate about Kobe's picture. And I'm, I'm willing to bet you he won more than what they say he won. If they say he won 24, I'm, I'm probably willing to bet you $10, $5 that he probably won 30-something. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, it don't matter what kind of dog they brought. It don't matter what they bought. When they bought a dog to, to beat my dog, my dog won. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, you got to go back in the days. Brothers will start thinking about how they live in the day, and you're trying to talk about the old dogs. Would Kobe's picture even sell in today's time if he was out here today being the color of dog that he is? You know, could he stir that dog out? You know what I'm saying? Forget the record because these brothers today wouldn't believe that record. They'll say he lying, he gassed, this and that. And plus the fact that Kobe's picture is a white dog, they would say a white dog that such couldn't achieve a record that he achieved. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't achieve that record. So that's why I say to my brothers and sisters down in the chat, give me your opinion, man. Do y'all think Kobe's picture should be selected to be the Michael Jordan of this dog thing? Or he's just another great dog? You know, now I would say the next thing we got to do before we straight put Kobe's picture on the Michael Jordan level or take him off the level. The next thing we got to do is say the best dog you ever seen. Do you think he was better than Kobe's picture or the best dog you ever had? Put him side by side with Kobe's picture. Do you think that dog was a better dog than Kobe's picture? So that can help you make your decision. Should pitcher be considered the Michael Jordan of this game? Great dog. Can't take nothing from him. And like I said, any dog with a dog history that go back to the 19, early 1900s and they got match records on them, some type of match records on them, that's a badass dog. You know, stories that done, done went through the generations. They lost some stories. They may have gained a story or two, you know. But at the end of the day, it's 2024, and we still talking about Kobe's picture. So what do y'all think? Drop down in the chat, man. Drop down in the chat. When I checked Kobe's picture's offspring, he had 37 offspring. That's another thing that you can probably bet on. You can bet that if he got 37 offspring on online pads, we all know online pads don't mean nothing and it's not accurate. So we know if he got 37 pet offspring on, the, on that, then we can almost bet in real life he probably had pages of offspring. You know what I'm saying? Pages. All his offspring wasn't documented. We can probably all agree that most of Kobe's pictures offspring was not documented. 
You know what I'm saying? So big salute to them brothers. Uh, I ain't going to even say that's running that line, that's running that stuff, because we all running that stuff one way or another when they go back that damn far. You know what I'm saying? But I just had to pay the old man his respect and throw them old man up there amongst the young, the young bucks. You know what I'm saying? We can't forget these old dogs, you know? So like I said, y'all drop down in the chat. Y'all tell me whether y'all think Pitcher should be the Michael Jordan. Because we got a lot of dogs to talk about in these episodes. Episodes and episodes. A lot of dogs. And we starting off with Pitcher. PBK9 style, man. Let's keep this thing going. To my young bulldogs, my young dog trainers, and all my folk that rock with them dogs and trying to do things with these dogs. Understand this, a lesson I learned a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't ask for your respect in this game when it comes to these dogs. You know what I'm saying? As a young boy, <laughs> I took my respect. You know what I'm saying? I went out and got me a bulldog. You know, the one that, it, it, that I can do it with. You know? Took my respect. You didn't. Uh, you, you probably looked at me like I was fresh meat that day. But it's going to be a change today. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a change today. Because I want my respect and I'm going to get my respect. You know what I'm saying? That's why I told y'all brothers. These big kennels heads chop off the same way them small kennel heads chop off. And guess what? Guess what's better about them big kennels? <laughs> you just chopped off a big kennel. You know what I'm saying? You can win over here, but when you win over there, it's winning, big dog. You win. When a lot of brothers say, what's the fast lane? The fast lane is going to jump on one of them boys that y'all scared to jump on because you know your keep ain't up the par they keep. You know, the same excuse I always see around the board, state to state, city to city. My keep, oh, oh, man, all the brothers, real bulldogs can, can vouch that they know somebody who bulldog like this. You know, oh, my keep. He want a bulldog with them brothers over here all the time. But say, oh, um, Brother Maurice Carver want to go into him. Oh, now he don't want to go into Carver. Man, listen here, man. No hesitation at all. Come on, boy, let's go. We about to go to Mr. Carver's house today and have some fun. You know what I'm saying? See who got a bulldog. And guess what, Mr. Carver? I want the best thing on your motherfucking yard. The best thing on your yard, big homie. You know, I ain't want something that you can take 10 dogs before I get to the best. I want the best right now today. You might not bring the best out, but at least say it's the best. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it just is what it is, man. You know, as a young buck, <laughs> I had to, hey, take your respect when it comes to certain things. You know what I'm saying? You earn, you can earn your respect on uh, in other ways. You know, now one thing I do know a lot of y'all brothers talking about who, who on certain levels and who on certain things. We ain't gonna get into that no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of y'all levels stop, like I said before, right here. You know what I'm saying? Your heroes ain't leading you to no money, ain't leading you to no success, ain't leading you to nothing positive. Your mentors ain't. So, I'm just going to leave that way that right there, man. You know. Old, old Bulldoggers. You know, and I have to say certain Bulldoggers. It ain't all old Bulldoggers. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain brothers. Certain brothers. Now, let's get into a little bit of this dog news, man. Let's get into a little bit of dog news. We got some neighbors who exposed the Pablo West owner, uh, property owner for animal cruelty, cruelty, and they facing 24 animal cruelty charges. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all check this video out. Let's go to Pablo West, PBK9's Raw and Uncut. But the West woman is now charged with 24 counts of animal cruelty after a months long investigation from the county sheriff's office. Fox 21's Rhea Jaw tells us what the suspect is being accused of. I spoke with neighbors who said there were almost 50 horses on this property at one point. This open area in front of the house is where neighbors say the horses were is only about less than half an acre of space. 
The Pueblo County Sheriff's Office launched an investigation into Elizabeth Barnes McDaniel, now charged with 24 counts of animal cruelty after people reported several malnourished horses she owned. She explained to us that Rory came from a kill pen and that she had saved her and that um, she was a great horse and that she was broke to ride. She was just a little skinny from being at the kill pen. Rory is the horse Austin and Brianna Roy bought from McDaniel almost two years ago. The Roy's say McDaniel told them Rory was checked by a vet and had no medical issues. She said cut back her hay and grain because she's getting too fat. And at this point, we still trusted her before the miscarriage and we were starving a pregnant horse. The Roy's tell us after Rory suffered a miscarriage, she was severely traumatized, making her unable to ride. They say McDaniel neglected to tell them Rory was pregnant and lied about the horse's age by almost a decade. We loved Rory, but she became aggressive after the miscarriage. And then we had our vet come out and check on her and he pretty much told us that the age was a lie, the when her teeth were done last was a lie, that she was suffering. In collaboration with Pueblo Animal Law Enforcement and the District Attorney's Office, the investigation led to the rescue of six horses, nine dogs, five cats, two snakes, and a chicken. One horse had to be euthanized because of neglect. It's a shame, you know, animals rely on us to be taken care of the right way and they're not just an accessory. The Roy's say they have not been compensated for their loss and now wonder who else she did this to. She tore a lot from us and from our daughter who deserves nothing but the best and I'd like to see her behind bars. Court documents say McDaniel is also charged with two counts of child abuse and the sheriff's office did confirm that she has not been arrested yet, but she does have a first appearance court hearing set for mid-March. Reporting in Pueblo West, Rhea Ja, Fox 21 News. Now, let me ask my brothers and sisters down in the chat and the ones that's watching this video, you know, let me ask you a question. Are you a bag or are you a person? Are you a bag of money? Or are you a person? That's what you need to be asking the people that you're dealing with. To them. To them, are you a bag or are you a person? You know, because a lot of these folk out here treat you like a bag if you're not careful. No matter what your profession is. And the thing about it, you're not even in the bag. You know, you just a bag to them. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about how, how what you think. No, none of that type of stuff. You a bag, you know, so ask yourself that about folk you deal with, you know what I'm saying? Are you a bag or are you a person? You know what I'm saying? Do they treat you like somebody? Because I tell my brothers and sisters, you know, I've seen this throughout my life, you know what I'm saying? And I know we got millions of brothers and sisters out there who've been through their own struggle. Brothers are trying to treat you certain ways when they got certain things over you this brother can have more bread than you this brother can have a whole lot like personal houses whatever and they try to treat you beneath them you know what i'm saying they try to act better than you you know uh when i i, I shouldn't say act better they will try to act like they're a, a better person than you you know i've seen it too many times you know, even when it comes to that street stuff, you know, you know the brother who got the cars, the brother who got the money, the brother who got this, the brother who got that. That's the real brother. You know what I'm saying? The one who feeding everybody, the one who got everybody buying their cars, paying their rent, paying their bills, doing this, doing that, going shopping off them because they putting out that work. You know, they real. Because folk don't look at real actions they look at what you got, your personal stuff. The same way brothers try to do in the dog game. And they get mad because I correct the situation. None of that stuff, none of that stuff drops down and, and trinkles to the dog game. What you do with these dogs is what you do with these dogs. What you do at work is what you do at work. You know, it just is what it is, man is what it is. Are you a bag or are you a person to the people that you're around? Now, one, one thing a brother gave me a topic, and I want to say big salute to that brother. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to you, my bro. 
Uh, I want to speak on this before we get up out of here. Uh, you know, back in the days when it comes to these dogs, it used to be, and this is a quick difference, you know what I'm saying? It used to be you, you went to somebody's house and you wanted to see the dog. You know, the dog. it was the dog and then the pedigree was attached to the dog. But the most important thing that you worried about was the dog. Now, it's, it's the total opposite because when you go try to find a dog man or you find a big dog man house, the first thing before you even see the dog, you want to see the pedigree. You fall in love with the pedigree and you haven't even seen the physical dog yet. You know, that's the modern day dog man. And that's why the level of success won't be the same on that level. The modern day brother has the, the you know, you're doing things on a legal level. You're going to have to do things on a legal level. So that's why we going to take things to levels that them brothers back then and me and none of us back then could take it to because we try to stay on the illegal level back then. You got to do it on the right end. You know what I'm saying? The accolades from back then don't mean shit no more. They can't do nothing for you. It's new day and time. It's about what you're doing today. It ain't about what you did in the 80s. That's as good for a story as always. You know what I'm saying? Good for a story as always. But hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to our brother, like I said, for uh, giving me that topic to talk about. Um, the dog was connected, the dog, it was the dog, and the pedigree was connected to the dog, now it's the pedigree you fall in love with, then you go see how the dog look, you know what I'm saying, because you, you may be willing to take the dog, if the pedigree look the way you want it to look, you may, you may just can't turn that pedigree away, oh man, I'm gonna take this dog, especially if you know that dog really off that, you fall in love with the ped first, you know what I'm saying? The same way if uh, if brothers say you got puppies for sale. Before you see the puppy, you want to know what the pet is. This might be the best puppy you ever seen in your life. But you won't never get a chance to know that because you don't. if you don't like the pet, you won't take it no further. You know what I'm saying? Big salute to all my brothers and sisters out there, man. Hope y'all had a great and safe Sunday. Hope y'all have a great and safe Sunday. Y'all keep doing y'all thing out there. I'm going to keep doing my thing out there. PBK9 is giving it to you the way I always, always do it. Y'all stay legal out there, and I'm out.